This is the reading for the second day of chapter 6, and we'll continue talking about the standard deviation as a ruler, and also talk, begin talking about the normal model. So um, you may have heard about bell-shaped curves and statistics. We will use them basically from here on out. Um, it's a very common distribution that happens when things are happening randomly, because you have a lot in the middle and a few on each end. Okay, um, and what we will do is we will, um, using the ideas of um, shifting and um, scaling, we will move the center of our distribution at zero and the standard deviation to one, and we will use that model to find percentages and to see how likely does something would happen. Um, that's how that's connected to what we talked about um, previously in class. Um, you should get used to checking conditions. Okay, with any with any model that we use, you will have to check a condition before any uh, procedure or tool that we use. You have to make sure that the tool that you're using makes sense. Okay, so the, in this one, there's only one condition. It's the nearly normal condition. Um, as far as today, all you need to know about that is that um, the distribution has to look somewhat like the normal model for any of these tools to work. And we'll talk in the next reading about how to actually check that. Now, um, if that's true with the center at zero and the standard deviation of one, um, we can place the, the normal model on there. And we have something that's called the empirical rule or the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, which says that 60, roughly 68% of our data will fall within one standard deviation of our mean. And roughly 95% of our data will fall within two standard deviations of our mean. And about 99.7% of our um, data will fall within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, And this is a really powerful tool. Okay. Um, and related to that, we can use that to kind of expound upon that and talk about that, you know, within one, within, between zero and one standard deviation above the mean, there's 34% of our data or, you know, less than negative two standard deviations below is only 2.5% of our data. So you can subdivide this as well and talk about, you know, use that to figure out a rough estimate of what percent of our data or how likely is it that something would fall within two, um, you know, between two intervals, between two values. Okay, um, make sure you pay attention to this TI tip. Um, it gives you the, on the way, on the calculator to find out um, how likely it is that something would fall within two Z scores. Okay, so it's normal CDF, le the left bound and then the right bound, okay. Um, it's very true that you will use this often. It's a very powerful tool. Pay attention to the step-by-step -step examples in this section. Um, they're really powerful. I'll just highlight two of them here. Um, you know, using normal CDF to find the likelihood of having something happen between um, a half standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. Um, and that likelihood happens to be 0.533 um, as the probability. And if you're doing just one value, you will use normal CDF and then left bound comma right bound. But if you're having it go off to infinity, um, 99 standard deviations is pretty far. And so you can use that um, to estimate, you know, from this is above, how likely is it that something will be above 1.8 standard deviations above the mean? Okay, that or, or above. Or if you're doing below, you would do negative 99 comma and then negative, you know, 1.8 or whatever the z-score is, okay? So we will talk much more about z-scores. If you're feeling uncomfortable with this, don't we will practice this more in class. Um, but this is just an exposure to the ideas of the normal model and that using that model to find percentages and how likely it is that something would occur.